I'm Dr. Ken Landa. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about tamoxifen or Novidex. This is a very important drug. It's one of the most commonly used drugs to treat breast cancer, both in women and surprisingly in men. And not only does it treat the breast cancer, it can prevent the recurrence of breast cancer and it can prevent the development of breast cancer in women who've never had any breast cancer at all. It's typically used for five years. It was discovered in 1967, licensed for use in the United States in 1977. Then it gained additional approval in 1990 for preventing recurrence in women who were node negative. In other words, when they cut the breast cancer out and evaluated the lymph glands, they didn't have any involvement. And then in 1998, it was approved for prevention of the development of breast cancer in women who never had a history of the disease. And that's an important drug. It's on the World Health Organization list of essential drugs that was originally described or developed by ICI Pharmaceuticals and it was used as a morning after contraceptive pill and for fertility treatment. And additionally, Dr. Judah Folkman from Harvard University, he was evaluating the drug as an anti-angiogenic therapy, a therapy that would prevent the development of blood vessels. Now, you know that tumors, when they develop, need blood vessels. And if you can prevent or block the development of the blood vessels, you might be able to block the tumor. Now, it seems that tamoxifen works through a different mechanism. Well, before we were very sophisticated about breast cancer and knowing about the estrogen receptor on the surface of the cell, some breast cancer cells have estrogen receptors, some don't. If the tumor has an estrogen receptor, then it seems that tamoxifen works and works very well. We didn't know that originally when the studies were done. So all women were evaluated, a bunch of women were evaluated in studies. The studies in 1971 were discontinued by 1972 because when we looked at women who had advanced breast cancer without the knowledge of these estrogen receptors, it didn't seem to work. And again, in early disease that was studied in the 1980s, didn't really seem to be all that effective. Again, without the knowledge that some women had these estrogen receptors and some women didn't. Well, finally, when it came down to looking at some of the data, by 1998, we realized what the situation was. And then, when directed to women who have estrogen receptors on the surface of their cells, that's kind of like a lock. The drug itself, tamoxifen, is like a key. The key has to fit into the lock. If you don't have the lock, then the key isn't going to be any value. Well, breast cancer is an important disease. There are going to be about 230,000 women who develop breast cancer this year. Obviously, that's a significant number. That's almost 20,000 women per month. 40,000 women are going to die of the disease. Fortunately, the drug works so well that about 400,000 women are alive today because of tamoxifen and millions more have had prolonged disease-free survival because of this drug. And interestingly enough, tamoxifen was the first drug that was approved for prevention of cancer. But remember, it only works in women whose tumors have that particular lock, the lock that we call estrogen receptor estrogen receptor positive women. If it doesn't have that estrogen receptor, estrogen receptor negative women, the drug is not going to work. Well, it treats both early disease and advanced disease. It treats the tumor in both premenopausal and postmenopausal women as long as there's that estrogen receptor on the tumor cell. And interestingly, it's also the most commonly used hormonal therapy for men with breast cancer. It's in the family of what we call SERMs, SERM stands for Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulator. It's not really an anti-estrogen like most people think because it works like estrogen in some tissues, like in the bone, and it works against estrogen in certain tissues, for instance, the breast. Well, tamoxifen, of course, decreases the risk of invasive breast cancer and it also decreases the risk of a forerunner of breast cancer. We call it ductal carcinoma in situ, or DCIS. Additionally, tamoxifen seems to help reduce the level of bad cholesterol. 
and it stimulates bone cells, so it increases the bone mineral density and decreases, decreases the risk for developing osteoporosis or bone fractures. Now there's another drug that's used to help prevent breast cancer, it's called Avista or Riloxifene, doesn't treat the disease, seems to have some fewer side effects, but again, it can't be used as a treatment. Now, this drug is used for prevention in women who have a family history or a personal history, those women are at high risk, but it's also used for women who are at average risk if they're between 40 and 70 years of age if they have a lower than average risk for both blood clots and stroke because those can be complications of this particular drug. Now, the drug gained authorization or gained the blessing of the United States Preventive Services Task Force. That's a group established by Congress of independent physician experts. And when they evaluated all of the data in 2002 and again in 2013, they said, hey, this drug is a very good drug. Well, most women have a tendency to overestimate their likelihood of developing breast cancer. So if we look at a period of about five years, an average 40-year-old woman only has about one-half of one percent chance during that time period of developing breast cancer. And if we look at a woman who's age 50, the likelihood over the next five years is somewhere around one to one and a half percent. If we look at women who are age 60, the five-year risk is somewhere between one and a half and two percent, and it's slightly over two percent for a five-year time period in women who are age 70 or over. Now, it's interesting that most women who are at high risk for breast cancer are not going to develop the disease, and it seems like most women who develop the disease don't have any special risk factor for it. Now, how long do we treat women with tamoxifen? Well, if you have localized disease, for five years. If you have disease that is not localized, well, we treat for more than five years, often for 10 years. We can decrease the recurrence rate in postmenopausal women and in premenopausal women, decrease the recurrence rate of breast cancer by somewhere between 30 or 40 and 50 percent. So that's significant. We can decrease the development of cancer in the other breast by about 50%, and when we use it to prevent the development of breast cancer in women without a history of the disease, again, we reduce the likelihood of development by about 50%. And in men who've had a history of prostate cancer who are going to be on some therapy, some anti-androgenic therapy, we know that this drug is probably the best available drug to prevent the development of enlargement of the breast. Now, additionally, and totally unrelated to its anti-cancer effect, we know that in women it might improve fertility if women don't have ovulatory cycles, if the drug is taken between days three and seven of the cycle, and it also can help in men who have low testosterone because it increases the development of certain kinds of chemicals from the brain that stimulate the production of testosterone. Now, the drug is a prodrug. Tamoxifen is not the active ingredient. You have to have a metabolic byproduct that occurs when the drug goes to the liver and it is metabolized by certain enzymes. Now, once the drug's metabolized, it has somewhere between a 30 and a 100 percent more affinity for that estrogen receptor that we were talking about that's so important. How's the drug metabolized? Well, you take the drug in, goes through the bloodstream over to the liver, and then it's going to be activated by a certain enzyme. But about 10% of the women might not have very active enzyme that can change the drug. So for those women, the drug might be somewhat less effective. Or you might take a drug, you might take a different kind of a drug for a different purpose that can interfere with the activity of that enzyme. And if you inhibit the activity of the enzyme, then you might not be able to activate the tamoxifen. So people who are taking Wellbutrin or people who are taking Prozac or Paxil, those are strong inhibitors of that particular enzyme. And moderate inhibitors would be commonly used drugs like Tagamet for upset tummy or Benadryl 
or Cymbalta or Zoloft or a drug used for heart rate control known as amiodarone. So if we look at women who are taking drugs like Zoloft or Prozac or Paxil, if they happen to have an issue with this particular enzyme, well, the recurrence rate, even though they're taking tamoxifen and they happen to take one of those drugs like Prozac, well, over the course of several years, the recurrence rate of the breast cancer might be as high as 16% compared to only about 7 or 8% if the women weren't taking those drugs. So if you have depression, maybe a better drug to take would be Lexapro or Luvox. Now, additionally, it seems there are some other kind of chemicals that tamoxifen needs in order to work, but how does it work? It works by stopping the cell from going through its dividing cycle. So the cell has to manufacture a whole bunch of stuff and make the DNA and then make the genes and make the chromosomes and then make all the other stuff so the cell can divide. Well, tamoxifen interferes early on in that cycle. We call it the cell cycle. It doesn't kill the cell, it just arrests the cell in its early stage of development. Now, as with any drug, if you take tamoxifen, you could have some side effects. Side effects could be irregular periods or spotting or decreased sex drive. It can cause vaginal dryness and hot flashes and night sweats. In some women, it causes mild nausea or fatigue. It can cause weight loss or weight gain. And sometimes it can cause blood clots, so it can cause some swelling of the leg. Well, it mimics the effect of estrogen, as I mentioned, on some tissues. That could be good, like the bone, so it could stimulate development of bone in postmenopausal women. But in premenopausal women who've had breast cancer, who've gone through chemotherapy, it might unfortunately weaken the bone. Some unusual side effects or less common side effects. Well, it can increase the development of cataracts. It can lead to blood clots and then pulmonary emboli and stroke, it can cause an increase in the incidence of uterine cancer. And that seems to be a condition that causes a lot of women not to want to take this particular drug. Now, it works like estrogen in the uterus, so it can increase the risk of development of cancer of the uterus, and it has to do with the dose of the drug and the timing of the drug and how long you take the drug. But we know that the drug might be on the list of uh, known carcinogens according to the American Cancer Society. And that's why there seemed to be the limit in women who have a uterus still, who haven't had a hysterectomy, that's where the five-year limit came from. But uh, number one, it's not a problem in premenopausal women. And in postmenopausal women, they go through their normal checks with the gynecologist and that should be sufficient. Now, it's important to realize that if you develop the endometrial or the uterine cancer, it's because the estrogen effect on the uterus is causing proliferation and uh, what we call hyperplasia and can cause carcinoma or sarcoma. So a woman who has some spotting or some staining or some vaginal bleeding or some discharge who's taking the drug, who's postmenopausal, needs to go and see the gynecologist. So those women need extra evaluation. But how good is the drug? The drug is very good. So if we have a thousand women who are 52 years of age and we follow them over a short period of time, we're going to find that about 19 of those women are going to develop breast cancer, but nine of them will not develop breast cancer if they happen to be taking tamoxifen, and 13 of those women are going to avoid an osteoporotic fracture. All very good. The problem is that 21 additional women will probably develop uterine cancer, but uterine cancer is typically very easily treated and certainly when caught early isn't a problem. 21 of the women are going to develop blood clots. About 30 of the women are going to develop cataracts going to have sexual problems in about 12 of the women, and about 100 of those women are going to have vaginal discharge or irregular periods. So the current recommendations are if you have breast cancer, you would take tamoxifen for five years, or you would take an aromatase inhibitor for a period of five years, or you could take the tamoxifen for five years and then follow it with an aromatase inhibitor, or you could take the tamoxifen for two or three years and take the aromatase inhibitor for a period of maybe 15 years or more. 
or you could take the tamoxifen for five or ten years. And the good news is that after you stop taking the tamoxifen, the benefit of tamoxifen seems to persist. So that's all very good. And as I said, the tamoxifen also works for men who have a history of prostate cancer so that when they're treated it prevents the development of painful enlargement of the breast and it seems to work better than an aromatase inhibitor or even radiation therapy. But as with everything else there's the potential for abuse especially in men. So what we know is that the bodybuilders, now what they're doing is they're often taking the supplements, the supplements of male hormone, testosterone, but that might change their hormones inside and that might lead to enlargement of the male breast. So they take something called estosuppress. And in three quarters of the samples of estosuppress, it was found that they contained an average of about eight milligrams of tamoxifen. Now is tamoxifen an expensive drug? Well, in the developing world, it can be purchased for anywhere between about seven cents and 23 cents a day. Here in the United States, if you pay cash, it's about $50 a day. But if you have a coupon from GoodRx, it might be anywhere between $17 and $46 a month. Or you could take a prescription to Blink Health online, and there it costs about a dollar a day, about $27 a month. So the brand name, the Novadex, that was discontinued. It was manufactured by a company known as AstraZeneca. They used to charge $1,200 for a year worth of therapy. But when the drug became much less expensive, they said, well, we're not interested in producing it anymore. And they stopped in about 2006. So how do we rate tamoxifen? Tamoxifen is a, one of those A number one drugs. It works very well. It does what it's supposed to do. It treats breast cancer. It prevents breast cancer. And it helps men additionally if they have prostate cancer and are going to receive therapy. So the drug works well, does what it's supposed to do, and it's relatively inexpensive compared to most other therapies that are used to treat or prevent cancer. So we'll give this one an A. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.